This video will demonstrate how to score a live game using TurboSat's Evolution for Basketball. If you'd like to add any players to your existing team, simply press the Add button, enter the player information, and press Save. If you'd like to add photos, tap on Profile, double tap to add the photo, and then hit Save. You could add a team photo as well. There's a player called Team, all capital letters, and you could just add photos for each team. To score a live game, tap the Games button at the very top of the form. And what I like to do first is to auto-hide the taskbar at the bottom to give me some more room. If I right-click or tap and hold and choose Properties, and then auto-hide the taskbar and hit OK, that'll clear up some extra space there when you're scoring a live game, and we'll see that in a minute. To add a new game, press the Add Game button. If you're going to be adding data from a score sheet, simply drag the players into the game, enter the statistics, and then press Save Game. If you're going to be scoring from a live game or from video, press the Live button at the top or the Live Score button at the bottom. The first thing we're going to do here is add an opponent. Just tap Open Opponent on the right. If it's a new opponent and you haven't created this team file yet, simply type in the name here and type Open. If you've already created a TurboStats team file, just open up that team file from the list. If you need to make, or it's going to prompt you to create a new game, simply hit yes to that. If you want to make any lineup changes, tap the lineup option. You could enter any players, you could select a player and make any edits you want if you want to change the uniform number, and then hit close. Before the game starts, you want to set the game properties, so go under the preferences and go to Game Properties, and you could set how many periods per game, how many minutes per period. If you change the minutes per period, just hit Reset Clock. We also have Auto Complete, which prompts you automatically for different statistics to speed up scoring. If you make a basket, you could prompt for assist. If you miss a basket, you could prompt for a rebound. If you have a block shot, you could also prompt for a rebound. If you have a take charge, you could prompt for an offensive foul, and so on. You could set any of those options right here. To add players into the game, simply double tap any player from the lineup below, or you could drag and drop the players right into the game, wherever you want to put them. If you double tap, they will go in the next available location. Let me add five players for both teams. Now if you notice, if a player does not have a photo, you will see a sil silhouette for that player. You have the option, if you don't use photos, to go under Preferences, Player Stats, and turn the option to show photos off. Instead, you will see Rebound Percentage, or Offensive and Defensive Rebounds, and we'll show you how that works as well. It's a great statistic. It will track the actual rebounds and the actual opportunities for each player in the game. Now to start scoring, we want to start off turning the clock on by using the button at below the court or the button at the top right. There's an option to start the clock under any scoring event as well in the preferences. If you notice the area above the court turns orange so you could easily see that the clock is running. We also track the time for the video. So if you want to sync your video with all the play-by-play -play events, you'll notice that the video option turns on automatically. Each period it will reset to zero. If we go to events, we'll see that there's a running time tracked for the entire period that's independent of the actual game clock. This way, when the game is over, simply plug your camera into the USB slot or take your SD card out of your camera and put it into your tablet or laptop and you'll be able to see all synced video automatically tagged so you could sort by any player, any type of event, and see the videos quickly. You could even watch them at halftime. Now I'm going to show you how to start scoring a game. What you'd like to do here is tap one of three things in any order. The player number, made or missed, and the location on the floor. You'll be prompted automatically for an assist. If it's an unassisted shot, you can tap the unassisted option, the player, 
and then the location on the floor, and you will not be prompted for an assist to speed up data entry. If there's a rebound off a missed shot, tap the player, the missed shot, it'll prompt for either team for the rebound. If I select the team on the left, if you notice in the rebound column, everybody will get a defensive rebound opportunity for the defensive team. In the offensive team, every player will get an offensive rebound opportunity. It's a great way to see how this updates here. So player two is one for one in opportunities of getting defensive rebounds. If you want to quickly turn on or off the photos or in the rebounds, just double tap the image at the top right or left of the screen. If you notice at the top, you will see career stat information automatically updated as the player takes any shot. Let's just see if he makes a three-point shot. Okay, you see the numbers will increment automatically for each player. If there's a block shot, there's two ways to enter that. The easiest is to select block, tap some location on the floor, select the player who took the shot, then you'll be prompted by who made the block, and then you will be prompted for a rebound. Now, if it's an offensive rebound, you'll see on the bottom of the court, we'll see a 2C in pink. This means any shot after this is considered a second chance opportunity. So if we make an unassisted second chance shot, you'll see the shot shows up in pink so you can easily identify it. Another way to enter a, a shot that's missed and, and it's a putback is simply by choosing the putback option instead of rebound. I can hit putback made, select the player and the location, and it automatically gives that player an offensive rebound and the shot. And it considers it a second chance opportunity. If you have to make any changes, you could simply hit undo to go back, or you could double tap any shot in the list, and you could hit the move option and move the shot to a different location, or you could set any other factors, like if it was not a second chance opportunity, or if it was off a turnover, you could turn any of these things on and off. You could also track each play that's run, tap the plays button, Enter a play or select any play from the list, the location on the floor. You could choose an option, up to four player op play options, the player who shot it. And if there was an assist, now if we look under our events, you can see that play is recorded now in the list. So we could track all your statistics for all your different plays. If you have the platinum or higher edition, you could just simply hit the scout button to see this information. You could also choose to sh display the scouting information at the bottom of the screen, or if you have a larger area monitor, you could choose, you know, you have more area over on the right to view it. You could also choose the, the narrow shot chart option and then display the scouting information to the right side. So if I take a shot off a particular play, a zipper, Option A, and it's made. You'll see that shot is automatically tallied here for you. And this way, if the game's coming down to crunch time, you need to see what's working. You could actually see all the plays you've run in that game. Let's go back to the large shot chart. To enter foul, simply select the player and choose foul. Now, for the number of foul shots, you could simply check the number before they start shooting fouls. This way the last shot will be used to determine whether there's a rebound prompted and it will also keep track of how many possessions are actually used. So let's just miss, make a shot. We'll miss the second one. Let's just say there's substitutions coming in. You could just simply drag and drop any player in to make a substitution. And if you notice it still selects the current player shooting. You can say he missed the shot and who got the rebound. So you can make subs during foul shooting without having to reselect who's, who's making the shots. We have some options for uncontested shots. That's a shot with no defense contesting it. And you can see that the shot will show up with an underline. So you can quickly look at all your shots and see which ones are second chance shots. Um, 
uncontested, and we also have the option to track shots off turnovers. So if there is a turnover and a steal, simply select who got the steal. It'll be prompting you for a turnover. You could choose bad pass or stolen. And then if there's a shot made, unassisted made, off the turnover, you'll notice that shot shows up in blue. So again, it's easy to see any of these shots by looking at the shot charts and seeing the colors of each shot. If you'd like to see game factors at the bottom, simply tap factors and you'll see all the true shooting, effective field goal percentage, possessions used, offensive and defensive rebound percentage, turnover percentage, and free throws made per field goal attempt. We have another sub option called Turbo Sub. If you're making a lot of substitutions at one time, simply tap one of the team names and you'll get a prompt that shows every player on your team. And if you want to include more bench players, click on this arrow. And if you subbing 23 for 3, if, if 4 is going in for 5, you see how quickly you can make these substitutions for both teams. Simply tap it again or hit the X to turn it off. If you'd like to tag any play for a highlight, just simply click on the tag button at the bottom, enter the play, and in the event list, you will see that there is a tag for that particular event. This is great if you want to tag an event for a highlight video. If you want to keep track of scoring in, tr in transition, like a fast break, just double tap made or missed and the transition option will show up and any shot made will show up now in brown. If you're playing against different defenses, you could change the defense for either team just by tapping the defense at the top. And if you're playing against the zone, any shots made off the zone or missed will show up in gray. To enter a jump ball or a tie-up, first set the possession arrow after your typical, your first jump ball. And then as you select jump, if it happens to be a possession change, you will be prompted for a turnover for that player. And we also switch the possession arrow automatically. Now, as the period winds down, you'll be prompted to select the next period. Or you could just simply tap the period button as well to change the period. To change the clock, just simply stop the clock, tap on the clock, and then type in whatever the clock setting should be. If there's any fouls, you'll notice that the player who made the last foul will show up on the scoreboard. If there's any timeout, simply tap full or 30 or 60, and then tap the team, either the pitcher of the team at the top or the T at the bottom to charge the team for a timeout. If there is a team rebound, you could simply tap the T as well for a team rebound. We also have the ability to track what we call defensive effort. If you want to give someone a, a point for diving for a loose ball or a deflection, just simply double tap on the player's uniform number and we will automatically give that player a defensive effort. You could undo that at any time by pressing the undo button. If you notice, we keep track of how many minutes the players have been in the game since their last substitution. And we also keep track of what we call plus or minus uh, combination points. So if the player has been in the game and the team's down 10, when that player is in the game, you'll see a minus. If the team is up, in this case, it's a plus 4. And you'll see that as well, so you can get an indication of how the team's playing with certain individuals on the floor. We also have plus or minus five-player combinations for the, the entire groups of five players that are currently in the game. We automatically update that for you as you make substitutions. If you want to see a box score, simply tap the box score button at any time. And you could tap play-by-play -play if you'd like to add the play-by-play -play to the bottom of the box score. If you like to do shot charts, go to Compile Stats and prick shot charts, and then you could preview that. And this will print to any Windows printer. So if you have a Windows printer in your coach's office, you could print right to it from right out on the floor 
so the reports will be ready at halftime. Okay, that basically covers most of all the live scoring. We do have an advanced live scoring video also you could watch. that tells you how to use our metrics, how to score and track defensive plays and offensive plays, how to do scouting reports, and also how to track the point guard. If you want to mark who the point guard is, simply drag this ball to whoever the point guard is, and as you're entering events, you'll see at the bottom it'll keep track of who the point guard is, and we can make team statistics based on who's running the offense for your team. So that includes uh, pretty much all the common scoring features that you'll encounter. If you are not tracking the opposing team, you could simply just tap the opposing team's um, scoreboard score, and it will increment by one if you don't want to track any stats for the opponent. So we pretty much covered all the live scoring features. I'd like to thank you for watching, and be sure to check out our other videos 